Hey there, Cassandra here. Now in the following video, we're going to do something a little more technical than I normally do. And I'm gonna go through somewhat of the procedure of recapping a monitor. Now recapping a monitor is a pretty easy procedure. It's a kind of electronics 101 and it's something you're probably gonna have to do pretty often if you collect arcade games. However, with that in mind, keep in mind that electronics and electricity are dangerous things. Proceed at your own risk. I'm not responsible if you totally screw up your game or if you electrocute yourself. So proceed with extreme caution. And if you're not sure or not comfortable what you're doing, don't do it. All right, here we go. So the first thing I always like to do whenever I get a game is make sure it's working. And we're fortunate because obviously the Rally X is working. So uh, that's a good thing. Uh, so we're not going to go into too much about board repair on this restoration, which is fine. Board repair is not exactly my forte. But if we look at this monitor, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's got a slight hum and there's a little bit of a wave to it. It's not quite filling up the entire screen and the overall appearance of the monitor size wise, orientation wise, color is not great. What this means is the monitor is going to have to get recapped. Okay, so the first thing we ever do in monitor repair is we need to take off this, which is a suction cup, it is what comes from the flyback and lights the phosphorus inside the actual monitor itself. Now you need to take this off in order to get the board out to replace the capacitors correctly. And you just can't take it off because there's a residual charge a lot of times with these things and it will kill you, which will be a bummer. So you need to discharge it. Now some of these monitors do auto discharge, but you have no idea. Sometimes they don't and uh, some models don't do that at all. So you're going to get yourself a flathead screwdriver and all these alligator clips. I also like to wear rubber gloves. And then you take one end and you just clip it onto your screwdriver. Keep the other end and ground, you can just ground it right to the chassis. Make sure it's nice and secure. And then you're going to take the end and carefully go underneath the suction cup. Oh, did you just hear that? You just hear that little pop? And you're going to discharge the monitor this way. And you're going to get in there. There's a little hole in the clip. And I think we are pretty good there. So we're going to take it off. I like to really make sure here. And this thing comes off kind of like a just the world's most pain in the ass paper clip. And then we'll just take this. Oh, make sure that's plugged in there. These things become unclipped sometimes. You really have to be cautious. Just go in there a little bit, make sure. And then we're good. It's carefully and safely discharged. And now we can remove the chassis from the tube and work on it independently. And we're gonna replace the caps now. All right, so we have removed the chassis from the monitor itself. So we can freely work on it without electrocuting ourselves, which is always a positive. And we have all these capacitors in here that we're going to replace with new ones. Now, some people like to test the capacitors and figure out, oh, this one's dead, so I'll just replace that one. But if you're gonna do it, if you're gonna go to the trouble to actually take it out, go ahead and just replace all of them for future problems. You know, just because one may be dead doesn't mean the others don't have problems or won't eventually start dying off quickly. Now, when we talk about capacitors, uh, for those of you who may not know, these little guys are capacitors. And there's a couple important things to remember about capacitors. Uh, first of all, you want to always know where the negative is. There's a negative and a positive end to regular capacitors. Uh, there are some that don't have a polarization, but we'll get to that at some other point in the future. And if you look, there's a little stripe on the negative side that will tell you what's negative. And the other tip here is there's two leads coming out of a capacitor. And uh, the shorter one is always going to be your negative. When you remove the capacitors, off the board to replace them and you want to do them one at a time to just make sure you're doing it right. That's a big recommendation to me. Uh, usually 
you want to pay attention to how they were originally negative or positive because even though some CPUs do have them silk screen very nicely on the board sometimes they're actually printed wrong so you want to kind of keep aware of that now some other things to remember about capacitors is that they have two rankings they have a voltage and they have essentially a farad rating if you don't have the right capacitor say like you have a capacitor that's rated for the board it's supposed to be a 25 volt um, 10 farad capacitor now if you don't have that 25 volt one you can bump up the voltage to like a 35 volt or a 50 volt as long as it's still that correct farad rating you can't change the farad you can't make them lower or higher and you can go up in voltage but not down in voltage from the original capacitor that is recommended by the manufacturer the other thing i will just kind of point out is you don't want to go too crazy with going up in voltage so like if you don't have that 25 volt 10 farad capacitor don't put a 200 volt capacitor in there will it work yeah maybe it probably won't fit correctly or very well but i have actually run into some weird problems where i've gone a little bit too out of the range of the voltage um i wouldn't pump it up much beyond what it was supposed to be originally these capacitors are pretty easy to find to find the right ones uh, i would always recommend trying to find the right one if you can uh now, you could buy a bunch of these capacitors in bulk and have them kind of waiting, especially if you have like a lot of projects like I do, and you're going to cap a lot of monitors if you have a lot of gains. But uh, an easy way to do it is you can just buy one of these guys, and these are cap kits, and they're available through a lot of different online sources for a lot of different monitors. Uh, I buy mine from a place called ArcadeShop.com. I really like those guys just because the shipping is so fast. I've never had a problem. Uh, I order stuff from them almost on a monthly basis. And usually what they'll have in here are all the caps and maybe one or two transistors you might need on the board that they recommend replacing. And sometimes they'll have a little, a little sheet that will tell you exactly where they're located and what to change. Now, of course, you're also going to need a soldering iron of some kind. I always recommend a soldering station. You're going to need some solder. Um, I always recommend some cutters, wire cutters, or some people call these dikes. Um, needle nose pliers, good idea, just in case you might need those. And a desoldering pump to get rid of the old solder in the sockets. You also need a little bit of patience. And the other thing I always recommend is get yourself a colored Sharpie. That way you can mark on top of the capacitor once you change them so you know which ones you've changed and which ones you had. And just in case maybe you do have bolt caps and you don't necessarily have all the capacitors that you're looking for. One other note with this is that there are a lot of different variations of model numbers, letters, orientations of these monitors. So, for example, the G07 Electro Home Monitor that we're replacing right now, there's several different versions of this monitor. So the 13 inch is going to be different than the 19 inch, and there's a couple even variations between those screen sizes. They made this monitor for many years. So make sure you have exactly the right model. The Walls Gardner 4600, is a little different than the 4900. So there's different capacitors. Always make sure you have the right caps for the right monitor. Take your time, it's not a race. If you don't have the right capacitors, they're freely available, so don't panic. Okay, let's go ahead and recap this board for our Rally X. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to uh, do one of these for kind of the benefit of the viewing audience here. If you've never done a cap before, we'll do one together. So I have, I have my board, um, I have my, my sheet with all the things from the cap kit. I have all my caps. Um, I also have a new hot that I'm going to install. I always like to put a new hot, which is what they um, refer to as these high output transistors when I do a cap kit usually it's just a good idea I also um, you see I have my laptop um, just in case I need to maybe look something up about it that is confusing it's always good to have that resource so I'm gonna try to do this the best I can here so you can see 
Um, you know, I always like to do this in some sort of a semblance of order just to make sure you know kind of where you are and what you're doing. So let's just start here at the back and we're going to start with, with, um, these wow, it's really loose. We'll start with, we'll start with this one. And if you can see they're labeled, right here, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this one, but that little big dot there on the board, that is the negative. And of course our negative stripe on the cap. And there's a little number on each one. Uh, it might be hard to see. It says um, C511. So we're going to start with that one. We're going to flip it over. And sure enough, right on the bottom of our board, it's also labeled as C511. Uh, capacitor 511. So we're going to stand this up here. Got my soldering iron all ready to go. I've got my desoldering pump that I'm going to go ahead and prime there. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of heat on that one and suck up that solder. And there's a good bit on there, so I'm going to just hit that little section one more time. hit the positive end. And if you do it right, if you're really, really good at getting all the solder out, sometimes the caps will just fall out. And that one just, just kind of fell out, just a little bit of pressure. You should never have to force or break them off. And you never want to do that because if you, if you force and break them off, then you run the risk of damaging the board, then you have to put a trace on, or even worse, you run into the delaminating of the board. It's just, you should never have to force a capacitor off. I've seen that online a lot of times. The other thing I like to do is, you know, there's a lot of gunk underneath here, um, probably from the cap kind of dying out a little bit. So I will always take a little bit of A little Windex, which you shouldn't be afraid to use because it's alcohol based, it's essentially ammonia. You just need a little bit on a paper towel and a Q-tip. And I will wipe that down. I like my boards and my parts inside my arcade games to be very clean and I'm not going to apologize for that. I've seen so many people who restore these games and you open the inside and it's like a pig side. Clean out your games, folks. It makes it so much nicer, and you have no idea what kind of creatures may be in here. Okay, so we'll look on our little list and see that it says cap 511. It should be um, 47 farads at 250 volts, which is what our previous one was too. So very good. So we'll open up our little our little baggie of parts and find the right capacitor. And it is indeed 47 at 250 volts. And then our negative. It's gonna go in to where the dot is. And I'm pausing the other end, you just kind of squish it in on there. You shouldn't have to force anything. And then what I like to do is when I flip it over, where I have I have my feet sticking out, I like to make them opposing. It gives it a nice, solid kind of base where it makes the cap not too wiggly. So when I go to solder it, I have... I'm using the solder as like a stand here, so I'm gonna get a little solder out. We're gonna be kind of tricky to get my solder. And just need a little bit. If you've never soldered before, this should take some practice. And that's it. And then I'm going to use my clips. And clip off the excess of the lead. And that is it. And of course, one last thing. We're going to flip it over. with these uh, boards and I have my sharpie 
and I'm going to mark across that I've changed that one. That way I know as I go through here which ones I've changed and which ones I haven't. All right, great. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and do them all. Okay, so here I am in super fast motion and I am changing all the caps. The most important thing again is to kind of keep track of where you are and what you're doing and you take your time. It's not a race. Uh, I always like to have a nice hot cup of coffee while I'm doing this and just kind of relax and make it a very um, zen-like experience. Uh, you know, uh, here I am replacing the hot. You can see that takes a little bit longer. And then afterwards, we're going to put the monitor back on uh, the chassis together. We're going to clean again as we go because we want the monitor to be clean. We're taking the time to rebuild it, so why not make it clean? Uh, you know, scrub it down a little bit the best you can, being careful not to damage any of the components around the neck, which are very fragile. And the last thing you want to do is crack the back of that neck because it will implode and you can really hurt yourself uh, and also just damage a monitor, which is always just kind of a huge bummer. Uh, so there we go, it's looking good. Okay. So we have reinstalled our monitor. And when you go to adjust the monitor, which you're gonna to have to do after you put capacitors on there, you're gonna to have to adjust the vertical and the horizontal as well as the colors. And also, sometimes the focus and the brightness or what they call the drive, which is the main two controls on the flyback down here. Now, when you do this, because it's gonna be on, you're gonna to wanna to make sure of a couple things. One, be careful. Two, wear some sort of protective gloves. And when you adjust your monitors, you're going to use one of these plastic monitor adjustment tools. Now the reason you use these and not like something metal, like a screwdriver, is because metal screwdrivers can damage the small little pots and you could also potentially electrocute yourself. So plastic, these are very inexpensive. You can get a whole pack of these for like $8 from any electronics store. Uh, this is the way to go. Now I've already taken the liberty of adjusting the monitor. It's a rather arduous task that takes a while back and forth. So instead of boring you with the details, and you could probably find a lot of other videos online that teach you good strategies for that. Let's take a look at the front real quick. Okay, we're gonna switch to the selfie stick and a very Spielbergic kind of crane shot looking thing here. And over my shoulder, you can see the monitor looks amazing right now. Those lines running through it are actually just the frame rate of the video that you're seeing it's not reality in the real world it looks perfect in the video on the iphone it looks weird because of the frame rate so one of the things you're going to want to do also with uh if you have a lot of arcade games or monitor repairs invest in one of these guys and this is a degaussing coil and it's essentially just an electromagnet that has a button that you can turn it on and off with and what this is for is that when you happen to move your monitor or you get a hot spot of a magnetic field, you get these little color blotches or kind of weird color patterns. And with this, I'm gonna to try to do this one-handed here. You put it close and you bring it back and it gets rid of the spots just like magic. So these are about 40 bucks. They're available at some better electronic hobby stores. Highly recommend that you have one of these. It makes your life a lot easier. Um, what also works is an old bulk tape eraser, but you don't quite get the same control as you do with one of these big hoops. So that's it. Uh, the Rally X is looking good. It is up and running perfectly. So now we're going to start working a little bit on uh, some of the more uh, visual elements to make it look nicer. I've got a couple projects in the work. School's officially over as of today. Thank you very much. And uh, so look forward to some more videos, I guess. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful and always be careful around electronics. If you're not sure what you're doing, stop, look it up. Better to be safe than sorry, you know, at your own risk, guys. So uh, be cautious. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye.